Hi there, um, welcome to Still and Royal Infirmary. This is our intensive care department. I'll just walk you up the corridor. We look into one of our rooms. This is a four bedded area. That's it. This is Scott. We'll hear from him in a wee bit. And we'll just walk up the corridor here. We have um, a couple of side rooms where we can isolate patients. This is the second one. We have a three bedded area up the top of the unit. And this is our Sean Mayer, this is our uh, ward manager. And he's going to just tell you a wee bit about our unit. So, hello. Um, we have a nine bedded intensive care unit uh, here with 58 uh, whole time equivalent staff. We um, have a high dependency unit and a coronary care unit which form the critical care department and they're geographically separate uh, units, uh, fairly closely co-located within the hospital. Um, we have a new hospital being built about uh, 10 miles from here which will have an, a combined ICU and HDU and coronary care will be a separate department in that hospital. Um, we uh, have um, no uh, experience here of previously uh, oscillating patients, although we did use very uh, frequently APRV mode of ventilation for our um, severe pneumonias. In terms of the geographical location of the hospital here, we're about equidistant between uh, Edinburgh and Glasgow, so when we refer to ter tertiary centres, our patients go probably 50-50 to, to Edinburgh or, or Glasgow. Anything else? What else was I going to say? Anything? No, I think that's all. No, okay. That's very good. Thank you very much. Hi there again. This is uh, Scott. He's our or one of our nurse trainers for the oscillator. Um, Scott, you want to say a wee bit? Hi there. Um, my name's Scott. I'm one of the, the staff nurses here at Intensive Care in Stirling Royal. Um, and last year, myself and one of the other the nurses here, George, uh, both attended a two-day uh, course down in Oxford um, and to be trained up as nurse trainers for the oscillator. Um, with the help of Marianne, who's our practice education facilitator here in Stirling Royal, and Janice, we managed to set up some uh, study days uh, here in the hospital. Uh, prior to that, we had Jo Quinton up to do a couple of sessions um, for a few days, and she was able to come into our unit uh, on the day shift and uh, grab people as they were free and uh, do ses tutorial sessions on the ventilator and she was able to do the night shift as well which was most helpful because um, getting people trained up it seems to be the main key to getting the oscillator up and running as part of the Oscar trial. Um, as prev previously mentioned that this unit doesn't have a lot of experience using high frequency oscillation as a mode of ventilation so a big part of uh, myself and George, the other nurse trainer's role uh, was to boost the confidence of the staff here and get them familiar with the machine. Um, we started recruiting in June and it was um, several weeks before we actually managed to recruit a patient to the trial. Um, and it was a slow start for us probably but now we seem to be recruiting um, on a fairly regular basis um, to, to both uh, limbs of the trial. Um, the gaps between recruitment can be um, lengthy though, having said that, and so uh, part of the nurse trainer's role is really to um, keep people up to speed even when the oscillator's not in use. When we do have it in use, people do seem to be grasping uh, the function and the, uh, the use of the ventilator quite well, and um, really once the confidence is up, you can see that people are um, understanding how the machine works and uh, the differences between the oscillation and normal modes of ventilation. Um, the trick for us now is to keep recruiting and fill in these gaps with people who have not had any training so far and make sure that it doesn't fall by the wayside and that myself and George and Marianne and Janice keep awareness of the Oscar trial there and to make sure that people are, uh, remain confident and build up their knowledge base on use of the oscillator. Perfect. Now we have uh, Wendy, she's one of our nurses here and she's actually uh, been one of the nurses that's used the, the oscillator more often um, than the others. Um, Wendy, do you want to just tell us a few words what you think of it so far? I've um, been really impressed with the positive outcome that the patients have had. Um, 
people and being on the oscillator. And has the oscillator been quite easy to use and set up? Very easy, easy to set up and the flow chart's been very easy to use. You probably. were actually the, the one that used it the first time and yes. it was... <laughs> bit scary initially but um, it was quite straightforward and really made a huge difference to the patient's prognosis. That's lovely. Thank now you very we much. We have Wendy. Dr. Martin Hawkins. He's one of our consultants here, um, and I'm just going to ask him what he thinks of uh, the Oscar trial so far and uh, the use of the oscillator. Um, well, I've been a great enthusiast of APRV on the the, the unit, and I've been uh, uh, very pleased with the benefits that we've seen with it over the years. And I must admit, I was very intrigued to see how it was going to perform up against the oscillator. I have to say that mostly, I think for all of the patients that have gone into the oscillation arm, there's been a, a group, they've all really gone from APRV because by, almost by definition we would have them on that by the time they're that, they're that ill. But in terms of oxygenation, there's been a great improvement in all of the patients going on to oscillation from APRV. Um, there's some concerns or uh, that, that I have. I think CO2 clearance is, is actually much easier on APRV and we have had um, PaCO2 levels sort of higher than we've ever seen on, on, on APRV, though eventually we can sort of, you, you, you do sort of get it under control and maybe sort of moving through the, the, the algorithm a bit quicker sort of can help that. Um, some of the other issues I guess that I have are we tend to have people a lot more sedated on the oscillator than they would be on APRV. And also we've got this the, the lack of spontaneous breathing um, so that's, and that's un, unsupported or unprecious, non-pressure supported spontaneous breathing, which we would normally always have with APRV and I'm quite keen on. Um, and of course we don't get that with, 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 with the oscillator and in, indeed with the last patient we had on the oscillator in order to to get them stable on it, we, we need to paralyse them. I don't think I've written up an atracurium infusion for for about ten years prior to this. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see what what the outcome what, what the outcome is with, with, with all of that. But so far, so good. Thank you very much.